Hi, welcome to Med Madness. Here is another interesting session. So last video we discussed about osmotic pressure. In this video, we'll see about microcirculation. So we are seeing edema in so many patients, ascites in many patients, patients coming in short of breath due to pulmonary edema. What is the concept behind this edema? Before we see that, we have discussed about the starling force that maintain our circulation. So these are the four starling force that maintain our circulation, which is discovered by the starling. He's a great physiologist, contributed to a lot of concepts in physiology. Let us discuss about these four forces in my sketch here. Okay, so the fluid in the blood exerts a pressure that pushes the fluid out of a capillaries promoting filtration. This is the hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries. Hydro means water. So the little fluid in the interstitium pushes the fluid from the interstitium into the capillary. This is the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium. I've shown you some particles in yellow, right? Those are the proteins in our blood. The major proteins in our blood is the albumin. This albumin exerts a pressure which is called colloid osmotic pressure or oncotic pressure. This pulls the fluid from the other compartment. This is basically a suction force or a pulling force. The little proteins are disfiltered out from the capillaries into the interstitium. This exerts a pulling pressure from the capillaries into the interstitium. So this is the oncotic pressure in the capillary. This is the oncotic pressure in the interstitium. I want to make this point very clear now. We have taken a beaker of water with a filter membrane in between. This filter membrane is permeable only to water. The compartment A has more number of particles. So we can say like this has increased osmolarity when compared to B and also decreased water concentration when compared to B because we have more particles in the fluid here. So what happens here? The difference in osmolarity between the two compartments creates osmotic pressure that moves the fluid from B to A and dilutes the concentration in the compartment A so to maintain the concentration. Or you can also imagine like the increased osmolarity in the compartment A pulls the fluid from the other compartment. So this is basically a pulling force. So let's consider this as compartment A and this is compartment B. So you have more proteins in the compartment A normally. So there is a pulling force from the interstitium into the capillary. Suppose imagine you have more proteins in the interstitium and this pulls the fluid from the capillary into the interstitium. Now, one more important point here. So normally some filtration is going on in our system. This filtration puts some proteins and some fluid into the interstitium. Now you should understand the role of lymphatics here. The lymphatic system here takes these proteins and fluid and puts back into the circulation. By this way, our circulation is maintained properly. Why? Because imagine you have more proteins that is filtered out and that is not taken up by the capillaries because of some obstruction here. So these increased osmotic pressure pulls the fluid from the capillary leading to a disturbance in the circulation. Now, how to calculate the net filtration pressure here? So just add up all the four pressures, you get a net filtration pressure. So the two force that promotes filtration are the hydrostatic pressure in the capillary and the oncotic pressure in the stitial fluid. The two pressure that promotes reabsorption or hydrostatic pressure in the stitial fluid and oncotic pressure in the capillary. So you basically you add all these four pressure, you get the net filtration pressure. If the net filtration pressure is positive, then filtration is going on in our system. If it is negative, then reabsorption is going on in your system. Now, what is this constant? So this constant is nothing but the surface area for filtration. So if there is increased surface area for filtration, there is increased filtration happening in our system. If there is decreased surface area, there is decreased filtration. So this is directly proportional. If there is increase in surface area, increase in filtration or decrease in surface area, there is decrease in filtration. Very easy, right? Okay. Let's see some examples here. I've given some values here. Let's put these values in our nephron system. So the hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman space is minus eight plus 45 here, zero here, and oncotic pressure is minus 24 here. So when you add up all the pressures, you get net filtration pressure, and it is found to be 
plus 13 millimeter mercury. What does this denote? So in this nephron, you have a filtration pressure of plus 13 millimeter mercury. Now, here is another workout. So you work out by yourself and leave the answer in the comment section for more practice. Now let us summarize. The great physiologist Starling described four forces that maintain our circulation. The hydrostatic pressure in the capillary, the oncotic pressure in the interstitial fluid that promotes filtration and both are positive pressures and the oncotic pressure in the capillary and the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitial fluid both promotes reabsorption. They are negative pressures. These pressures must be kept in proper balance so that our circulation is maintained properly. So any alteration in these starling forces can result in the development of edema. We'll see in the next session about pathophysiology of edema. If you have any doubts or topic suggestion, leave it in the comment section. See you in the next session with more interesting topics. Thank you.